The country's economy has been sabotaged and crippled by looters and vandals as we try to rebuild following a wave of criminality that rocked Guazulu Natal and Gauteng. The damage is extensive and will cost billions of rand. Let's discuss the impact this has had and how do we come out of this situation. Patrick Bond, a professor of political economy at the University of the Western Cape School of Governance, joins me now from South Durban, where he's been doing a bit of work in that area. Thank you for joining me, Professor Bond. Um, you say in a piece that you have written written and sent to us that, you know, before we go any far uh, in trying to establish how we get out of the situation, it's important to start with the key question of why did this happen? How did we get here? And you have four theories, I think, let's start there, with the four theories that are at play at the moment, depending on the narrative that one follows. Spell those out for us uh, and what they entail. Thanks to Lucidway for having me, and also thanks to your reporters. The journalists from your network and the other courageous journalists have been vital to us understanding and seeing for the first time things like our value chain, right? The destruction of, of warehouses and factories, not just retail. Very, very important work you've been doing. I think the critical questions are number one, is it um, an inside job, a theory uh, that President Ramaphosa and the state security complex? Um, with a deep state and with disaffected uh, pro-Zuma forces. And if you believe it's just this intra-ANC rivalry, the solution is for Ramaphosa just to get a handle on it, to get hegemony, to uh, displace that bloc, and then rebuild back the same. And that probably isn't going to work because there isn't that much evidence. And when one of the key, you know, the dirty dozen who manipulated things allegedly, was uh, putting himself towards uh, the Central Durban Police Station um, with his lawyer, they let him go. They had no, no case uh, against uh, Tulane uh, uh, Lolo. And I think that's one of the critical questions. Where is the proof of this conspiracy? The second theory comes from the Zumites, and they say this is a mass uprising to free Jacob Zuma. You free him, everything will be fine. You hear that from Mzuaneli Mani at the Jacob Zuma Foundation. That doesn't seem to be a valid theory. A third theory is just a, a food riot. That's all it is. Very hungry people going for bread. That theory doesn't hold when you see so many others with fancy cars looting. But I think a fourth theory, the so-called powder keg, which has been, especially from trade unions, it's warned about for quite a long time, that neoliberal policies that have not served the people particularly well for really uh, since the 90s when inequality has soared, unemployment soared, poverty soared, because of these policies, this has created the conditions where just some sort of spark could blow up this powder keg. So let's focus on these theories each in turn, uh, Prof, because you say in the, in the piece that you've sent us that um, depending on which theory is at play, the responses and how we get out of the situation uh, then turns out to be different. Let's start with the one you call a Zoomite radical economic transformation, factional conspiracy aiming at economic sabotage and even possibly a coup. This is the insurrection theory that has been spouted by, uh, by government uh, and, and, and President Cyril Ramaphosa over the last few days. Like you, I have a bit of a difficulty now because I've heard this theory about the, what you are calling the dirty dozen uh, since about day three of the looting and violence. And yet at this stage, uh, we are reporting one person out of the 12 arrested. And I just saw a clip now saying from Minister Peggy Taylor that three more have been named. If we know who these people are, why are they not behind bars? Are there even people that we can identify, the so-called 12 instigators? What, 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 what goes into that theory, and how does uh, President Ramaphosa respond to that theory, if indeed that's what's at play? You know, with relatively low Internet coverage and social media, to think that 12 guys have just been manipulating tens of thousands of people to go out and loot is just absurd, right? And this is a theory. I see this because um, I did my Ph.D. studies in the United States, and I saw right firsthand the kind of mentality, very politically immature, kind of backward theories that said, oh, it must be a conspiracy. You saw that a great deal with the Trump and even still today with the Biden government. And you see it with, you know, theories of COVID and New World Order, crazy conspiracy theories. It's such a shame that President Ramaphosa isn't grappling properly with the socioeconomic conditions that create these tensions. And I think that gets us to what 
if you have a diagnosis, the, the structural conditions, the policies, uh, the power of big business, this is the worst inequality in the world, right? We have the most corrupt corporate elites, according to PwC in their biannual surveys, with the angriest working class, according to the World Economic Forum, their um, global competitiveness report. You just check all of the data, the, the, the service delivery protests continuing to come. So building back differently becomes the challenge. And we have one agency with all the money. It may not have enough, so it's going to need Tito Mboweni to, to, to boost it. That's called SASRIA, South African um, Special Risk Insurance Agency, right? That agency started in 1976 after the Soweto uprising, served white business during apartheid well. Now it has to serve everyone. And every year it does spend between a billion or two billion rand. Uh, when there are service delivery protests or other riots. Uh, this riot insurance we all pay for, and now they need probably 20, maybe 30 billion rand. So if we're going to be giving Sasria, and then the uh, ho hopefully those who lost money can document it and they can build back, but let's make sure we're not building back the same, which means you saw, for example, Springfield or Mobani, you, your reporters were hovering over and you could see huge warehouses. And the question really now, which my colleagues here in South Durban Community Environmental Alliance, they're asking, should we be uh, a warehouse country where we're just importing goods from East Asia, typically low price, no environmental, uh, you know, no trade union, if you're thinking, say, east coast of China. And instead, we should localize. We should localize production, re-industrialize with basic needs products that currently we're importing and we're putting in these warehouses. Now, the warehouses are filled with big truck-based containers. They take them there, they repack, and they send them around. So the proposal is, no, no, you must build back differently, according to even government policy. Transnet has the idea. Maybe we need a dry port, a dry port in Cato Ridge, well defended. Yeah. The trains would go in. They would then not be so reliant on trucks. And with carbon uh, uh, content to our economic products and exports so high, we're going to be hit very soon with carbon taxes. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to rethink the way in which we're basically producing and distributing and selling at the retail level. And now this crisis, I think, could force us to do it if there's imagination in Sastria, the Treasury, and the presidency. Yeah, uh, and you've already touched on the uh, wisdom of having an arterial uh, line such as the N3 and depending on a primary uh, supply chain line, and you've also talked about the alternatives to that. Because of time, Professor Bond, let me ask you to speak to the other theory that uh, you, you tease out in the piece that you sent us. The theory about, you know, an uprising in defense of Zuma, the masses of the poor people are happy to make South Africa ungovernable, especially in KZN and Joburg's migra migrant labor hostels. Do you believe that's the theory at play in this case? No, I think that's a big mistake, and that's, of course, what Mzuneli Manye, what uh, Karl Niehaus, what maybe uh, Zile Zuma, some of the Zuma family would like you to believe, that this is mass popular, you see a little graffiti. But if that's not the case, if it's actually mass anger and frustration, the next uh, solution, the final um, approach I would uh, strongly recommend we discuss is a basic income grant some mass jobs program, something that would really create the welfare state promised in the 1955 Freedom Charter, the 1994 Reconstruction and Development Program. Those uh, social democratic, those welfare state strategies have just been withering away, and they need to be brought back to prevent this mass anger from coming up at some other unexpected time. All right, Professor Patrick Bond, thank you for your insights uh, uh, here on Upfront on ENCA. He's been just uh, looking at the situation that played itself out over the last few days and just teasing out various theories of what could have been at play and how uh, we then build our way out of the situation.